Physical diagnosis two, let's do some quick anatomy review before we look at our thoracic chest examination. When you are looking from the anterior approach on the patient on the right hand side, you're going to have three segments and 10 bronchopulmonary segments with the right upper lobe, the right middle lobe, and the right lower lobe. On the left hand side, you're going to have two segments and eight bronchopulmonary segments. Here you have the left upper lobe and the left lower lobe. Because of the presence of the heart, the residual functioning small part of the lingula, which is part of the lung, would have been the corresponding part to the right middle lobe. It is non-functional because of the presence of the heart. When we look at the posterior presentation, you're going to have on the left-hand side of the patient, the left upper lobe and the left lower lobe on the right-hand side you're gonna have the right upper lobe and the right lower lobe. Remembering that when you're auscultating, you want to have four on each side. When you auscultate, you're going to go from one side to the next because you're comparing the right against the left. When you're looking at a lateral presentation with the patient's anterior and posterior, on the right-hand side, you're going to listen on the right upper lobe. Again, this is the axilla right here, the right middle lobe, and then posterior on that lateral presentation, you're gonna have the right lower lobe. If we're looking at the left-hand side, again, this is anterior, posterior. The entire upper portion is the left upper lobe. Again, this is the axilla, and then the left lower lobe here. Some special considerations during palpation and auscultation of the chest wall. When we're talking about palpation of the chest wall, think about the underlying structures of the ribs from both the posterior and the anterior. This is a anterior view with the sternum and the ribs. The fractured segments here, where you have more than one rib fractured in more than one place, is called a flail segment. This would be denoted when you palpate the patient's chest wall or even visualize the patient's chest wall where a section of the ribs or the chest wall would be moving opposite the rest of the chest wall because it is not anchored. Again, that is called a flail segment, more than one rib fractured in more than one place. When we think about auscultating, we have three special considerations. One is called whispered petroliloquy. With whispered petroliloquy, it is a way to allow us to assess for sign consolidation, either the presence of fluid or pus within the lung. You simply place your stethoscope up against the patient's chest wall, and then you have them whisper one, two, three, four, counting up and listening to them. In a case of consolidation, this is going to be more readily transmitted and easier to hear, where if it is a normal chest or a normal lung field, it'll be muffled. There's another term called bronchophony. This is another type of petroliloquy, but in this situation, what we do is we have them repeat the term 99. In a situation where you have consolidation, the 99 will be transmitted and easily heard, whereas in a normal lung, it will be muffled. The last type of lung sound that we can listen to when we have a concern for the possibility of consolidation, either pus or fluid, is what's called egophony. Egophony is tested by having the person say the vowel sound E while the provider auscultates on the chest wall. If the person does have consolidation, either fluid or pus, the E vowel sound will present as an A or a bleating sound with the vowel sound being transmitted again from an E to an A sound.